Thank you for joining me at Mama Mata's History for Today. Welcome to Episode 4 of Women's Her Story series. I'm so excited to share about this phenomenal woman today. She is a groundbreaking leader, a person who is a force to be reckoned with, and I'm so happy to share her story with you today. So let's jump right in. This woman was a writer, an editor, a translator, an educator, a feminist, and a political activist. Her name is Jovita Idar Juarez. She was born on September 7, 1885 in Laredo, Texas. She is the second of eight children. As a Mexican-American journalist, activist, and suffragist, Jovita Idar often faced dangerous situations. However, she never backed down from a challenge. She single-handedly protected her newspaper headquarters when the Texas Rangers came to shut it down and crossed the border to serve as a nurse during the Mexican Revolution. Idar bravely fought the injustices of her time. Her pen names were Avi Negra, which means black bird, and Astria, the Greek goddess of justice. So a pen name is another way for a writer to anonymously write or to um, not use their name, but kind of use like a nickname. And lots of times uh, women had to come up with pen names because it was hard for any of their work to be published or they could be criticized or attacked for their words. Here's a lovely photo here um, of her and her brothers. Jovita's parents encouraged her to obtain an education. She attended a Methodist school called the Holding Institute, and in 1903, she graduated with a teaching certificate and began teaching in the tiny town of Los Ajuelos, Texas. Jovita was frustrated by the poor conditions of the school. She did not feel that teaching was doing enough to change the lives of her students. So she returned to Laredo to work as a writer with her father and her brothers on La Cronica. La Cronica had a reputation for promoting civil rights for the Hispanic community. Regular topics included anti-Hispanic racism, school segregation, the lynching of Hispanics, and the Catholic Church's poor treatment of women. Jovita argued that Hispanic children needed to learn both English and Spanish in schools, as well as both Anglo-American and Mexican culture and history. She warned that if children did not attend bilingual schools, they would lose their Hispanic heritage. Jovita was also a strong supporter of women's education and said, quote, educate a woman and you will educate a family. Jovita and her family used La Cronica to advocate for the formation of El Primer Congreso Mexicanista, the first Mexican Congress. El Congreso El Congreso was a group of Mexican-American men and women who wanted to fight for the fair and equal treatment of Hispanic people in Texas. They met for several days in September of 1911 in Laredo. The meeting included speeches, performances, and other events celebrating Mexican heritage and criticizing the poor treatment of Hispanics in Texas. Women were active participants in the convention. Jovita joined with other women in attendance to form the Liga Femenil Mexicanista, the League of Mexican Women, and was chosen as their first president. The Liga was both a political and a charitable organization and believed that national borders should not separate women and that Mexican and Mexican-American women had similar needs and wants. Members brought their work and their message to both Laredo, Texas, and Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. They created study sessions for women, opened free bilingual schools for children, and raised money to help poor families. 
the Liga promoted financial independence for women workers and encouraged those workers to join the Movimiento Feminista, the feminist movement. Inspired by her work with the Liga, Jovita founded El Estudiante, a weekly bilingual education newspaper for teachers. Articles offered strategies for bilingual education and discussed the dangers of the Anglo-Americanization of schools. In 1913, the Mexican Revolution came very close to Jovita's home in Laredo. The Battle of Nuevo Laredo took place just across the Rio Grande. Many Mexican-American women felt drawn to the revolutionaries' cause and wanted to help. In response, Jovita and her friend Leonor Villegas de Magnon founded La Cruz Blanca, the White Cross. They helped Mexican-American women cross the border to volunteer as military nurses. Jovita organized La Cruz Blanca volunteers supporting the Revolutionary Army and traveled as far as Mexico City with them. Upon returning to Laredo, Jovita continued to work for newspapers. She joined the staff of El Progreso when El Progreso published an article criticizing President Woodrow Wilson's military intervention in Veracruz. The Texas Rangers set out to destroy the office and printing presses. Jovita stood at the newspaper's entrance and refused to move. She argued that the newspaper was protected by the First Amendment. The Texas Rangers left, but the next day they returned when Jovita was not at work and destroyed the newspaper's presses. In 1914, when Jovita's father died, she and her brothers took over La Cronica. Jovita continued to work on other papers, including El Eco del Golfo, La Luz, La Prensa, and Evolución. Each of them provided a new opportunity for activism through journalism. In 1917, Jovita married Bartolo Juarez and moved to San Antonio, Texas. She and her husband founded the Democratic Club and became political leaders in the community. Jovita helped establish a free kindergarten, served as, served as a Spanish translator at the county hospital, taught hygiene and child care classes to women, and worked on a Methodist publication called El Herald Cristiano. So what we've learned from Jovita Idad is that she's an incredible woman who, in the face of so many injustices for her culture, for her gender, she just never backed down. She absolutely continued to create organizations to help women to help children, to help her community. She educated herself, she empowered others, and she again never backed down. Thank you for watching Women's Her Story series, episode four on Jovita Idad Juarez. I just am impressed with her story, and I hope that you were too. The fact that she stared down government officials who were threatening her First Amendment rights is just incredibly inspiring. I hope that you found some sort of inspiration from her um, with her writing, with her education, and her ability to see things as the way they should be, not how they are. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe.